In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the machining techniques needed to create lithophanes. Lithophanes really are a spectacle and always give that wow factor when people first see them as the image just pops into life. Lithophanes are quite an old idea which date back several hundred years when they were first created in ceramics and other translucent materials. It works by varying the height of the material used to create the image and this is why it is essential to use translucent material so it will let light through. But because we vary the height of the actual image so that the dark areas we have more material present so that it blocks more of the light passing through and the light areas we have less material to let more light pass through it so that when it's backlit we can see a grayscale image. And I've got a video here to demonstrate how lithophanes actually look when they first come off the machine and how they actually appear when backlit. So this is what they look like when they first come off the machine and this is what everyone always finds quite weird. So if we just then play this I'll show you that we actually then backlight it and you'll see that the image just pops into life. And you'll see that all the actual raised areas of that lithophane were the ones that now appear dark in the image. So let's start by opening a fresh copy of the software. And we're going to create a new file. And for this we're going to imagine our material is 8 inches wide and 10 inches high. And we're going to imagine that we're going to be using uh, material like Corian. So we're going to be using a quarter inch thick material. For our XY date and position we're going to be starting in the lower left and for our units we're going to be working in inches. I'm going to choose a solid colour for my appearance so just select that from the drop down box here, it's at the top and I'm just going to use a light grey for my colour and once we've got that we can, we can press OK so now we've got our layout, we can start thinking about creating our lithophane. Now this size of material is perfect for portraits, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually import a picture that we can then use to create a 3D model from. So if we just double tap in this area with the mouse, we will go straight through to the modeling tab. And we can do that the other way around as well, so if we want to go back to the drawing tab, we can simply just double click in this area as well. The tool I'm going to be using is in the modeling tab, so I'm just going to double click again to go back to the modeling tab and the tool we're going to use is this button here. That says to create a component from the selected bitmap. Now you may have noticed we don't actually have any bitmap imported at the moment and we don't have any bitmap selected. The good thing about this button is that it knows that we don't have any bitmaps imported and we don't have any selected at the moment. So what will happen is it will bring up an open dialog allowing us to actually select an image to import straight away to create a 3D model from. So we actually uh, miss out a step by doing this. And if we are going to be creating uh, 3D models from images that we import and that's the sole purpose of the image, then it's definitely better to uh, use this tool from the offset as we do get better uh, Z level results from using this method. So let's go ahead and press the button and as you'll see that the open dialog has come up. So I'm just going to navigate to a picture I've got of Charlie Chaplin and I'm just going to press OK to import that. Now as you can tell straight away that on the uh, 2D view we've got a picture which represents the image that I've just imported and on the left hand side in the modeling tab we can see that we've got uh, a component called Charlie Chaplin and that's the component that's been created from using this tool and importing the image. So before we take a look at the 3D view and what component it's created us, let's just take this image and put it where we actually want it in our design. So I'm just going to center this, so I'm going to use the shortcut of F9 on the keyboard. You can also use this tool here and just click this button here. Once we've got it centered, I'm just going to resize this image as I want to make it so it's 8 inches tall and 6 inches wide. So it will leave us with a nice 1 inch border around the whole of our material. So I'm just going to go over to the uh, set selected object size and I'm just going to change the height of this. So I'm going to keep it in the aspect ratio that it's currently in and I'm just going to specify a width of 6 inches. But I can see straight away that that 6 inches is not going to quite meet the height of 8 inches when it's actually uh, resized in proportion. So I just want to actually extend the width a little to say maybe 6.5 inches so it just brings the height uh, to just over 8 inches and then what we can do then is we can create a rectangle 
that just sits around our image and we can use that to create our boundary to machine in between when it comes to creating our toolpaths. So I'm just going to go ahead and click apply and then I'm going to close this form. So now we've specified the uh, exact dimensions that we would like our model to be. The next thing we need to do is actually look at our model to make sure that it's what we need for creating a lithophane. So I may want to actually view the 2D view and the 3D view at the same time here. So what we can do is we can go up to the 2D view controls and we can actually tell the windows vertically so we can actually see both of them at the same time. So if you just click that button you'll see that we've got the 2D view and then the 3D view. So if we just take a close look at our 3D model you'll notice that all the dark areas of our image have actually been cut deeper or sit lower in the height of our actual model. And the light areas you'll notice, so like the face area and the uh, shirt, you'll notice that they're actually standing well above all the dark areas in the actual model. And this is actually the opposite of what we actually need for a lithophane. What we need to happen is we need to have the dark areas barely cut into the surface or only slightly cut into the surface and the lighter areas cut well down into the material just so that the actual light passes through the lighter areas of our image easier than the dark images so that way uh, when we hold the lithophane up into light that we actually get a representation of a grayscale image so to achieve this is actually quite simple. All we need to do actually do is just reverse the light and dark colors of our model. So what we can do is with the uh, component highlighted we can go to the change properties icon which is just here and this then gives us all the details about the current model that's selected. So we've got the shape height so it's currently uh, standing 0 0.15 inches tall and we can tell at the moment that it's got a combined mode of add. And we can also tell this by hovering over the actual component tree and it gives us just a brief uh, summary of that component. So what we need to do is we actually just need to subtract the current combined mode so that then the height levels of the model get reversed. So just simply click this option here and you will notice that as soon as it's done it the uh, colors of the actual 2D image will also be uh, inverted as well. So once we've done this we can just simply click close and now if we take a look at our model in the 3D view we should now find that all the darker areas now sit above all the light areas in the model. So let's just zoom in a little and we'll see if we rotate it around that all the dark areas that were like the hat and the hair are now raised well above the bottom surface of our model and all the light areas in the image like the facial area and the shirt are now sitting well below all the dark areas which is exactly what we need to allow the light to travel through the light areas to then give us that grayscale image uh, when we've completed the lithophane. So now we have prepared our 3D model so that it's ready for machining. What we can do now is create our box that we're going to use as a boundary for our toolpath. So let's double click in this area to go back to the drawing tab and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a rectangle and I'm just going to roughly sketch our rectangle so it's roughly uh, 8 by 6 but what I can do is I can simply just use these here to make it easy for myself so I'm going to specify a width of 6 and a height of 8 inches I can just simply press apply I can close this while it's still highlighted I can just press F9 to center that and we've now got our boundary box perfectly centered along with our image that we're going to lithophane underneath. So we're now ready for toolpathing so what we can do is simply come up to this option here and switch to the toolpath tab. Before creating any toolpaths we should always check the material setup even though we can see just about all the information that we need here there is one option that is perfect for creating lithophanes. So let's go into the material setup and first of all let's just check over the parameters to make sure everything is okay. So I've got a material thickness of a quarter inch, that's perfect. I do want to start in the lower left hand corner. The rapid gaps and clearance is 0 0.2 inches above. I may just want to change that to something smaller to make this quicker. I'm going to start half an inch above the actual material. And the option that we're looking for here, which is you don't see from the outside 
uh, of this material setup is this option here, the model position in material. And the reason why this is perfect for lithophanes is that we can position our model where we want to in the material we have. And this is important because we want to have a solid base beneath our model which will allow enough light to pass through it to create our grayscale image when our lithophane is backlit. And we also want to leave enough material there to compensate for any discrepancies we may have in not having a perfectly flat machine bed or maybe a slightly off Z0 position for our tool. Finding the perfect depth to leave is dependent on your machine and the material that you're going to use. We've got a slider that we can use to move the model so you'll notice that the light brown colour represents our model. And an easy way to actually specify this is to change the gap above model to the gap below model and then we can specify an amount in here that we want to leave. So I'm going to specify an amount of 0 0.04 so our model will start 0 0.04 inches above the bottom of the material. And when we're happy with that we can then go ahead and create our tool pass. But before we do that I just want to quickly just reference uh, our 3D model at the moment and you can see that the dark brown material above uh, what is representing our 3D model is quite thick so what we may want to think of doing here is actually using a 3D roughing toolpath which will then allow us to hog away the majority of the material before actually getting down to the material which will be used for our lithophane. So to do this simply press OK to accept our material setup and then we can go to this option here which will create our 3D roughing toolpath. Now the first option is asking us to specify our tool. Now if we don't have an automatic tool changer on our CNC machine we may actually want to try and use the same tool for both toolpaths so that then we can output the toolpath as one. So to do this we may want to use an 8th inch ball nose. So I may just go into the tool database and select our 8th inch ball nose if we're going to be running this on our machine, just to make sure that all the cutting parameters are OK and press OK. And for this, I'm going to edit this tool so that it's specifically for our roughing toolpath. So to do this, simply press the edit button. And the thing I want to change is our step over. Now, ball nose tools are generally used for finishing toolpaths, so hence why it has a very small step over of 8%. But for our roughing toolpath, it doesn't need to be clean. It just needs to hog away the majority of the material as quick as it can, really. So I'm going to specify a step over of 40%, and then I'm going to press OK on that. Now the next option asks us to specify a machining limit boundary. Now if you remember earlier, we created a rectangle which was going to represent our boundary for our lithophane, so that we would only cut in between the rectangle. Now because our rectangle is currently selected, now obviously if yours isn't selected at the moment, reselect it and then select this option here. The next option in our list is to specify a machining allowance. Now the machining allowance is any material that's left above the material which will be used to actually cut the final lithophane. So I'm going to specify an amount of 0.02. It basically just leaves like a fine uh, skin of material which is going to be left for the finishing tool to actually finally cut out on the finishing pass. For our roughing strategy I'm going to keep this as the default here so the Z level is going to raster an X and profile last and um, I'm fine with that and I can just give this a name so 3D roughing I'm just going to call that litho and then press the calculate button. Now, this will bring us straight to our preview tool pass form and I'm just going to change the material colour that we've got at the moment. So I'm just going to go to the top and use a solid colour and choose a grey. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview the selected toolpath. So you can see uh, the material that it's going to hog away and leave for the finishing toolpath. Now don't worry too much that you can see lines that have been left from the ball nose because we've done such a large step over that isn't so necessary as all that material that, that you can see on the material block at the moment is going to actually be cut away to leave us with our final model. So let's close the preview toolpass form and let's go into now our 3D finishing toolpath. 
So to save on toolpaths that we were going to run on the machine, we said we were going to use the same uh, tool for our 3D roughing toolpath as for our finishing toolpath. So let's go ahead in the tool database and select our 8th inch ball nose. Now you'll see straight away that our step over is back to the 8%. That's because we only edited uh, the step over value for that particular toolpath using the edit button here. So let's press OK when we're happy with all those values. For our machining limit boundary, we're going to use the same option, the selected vectors. As you can see, our rectangle is still selected. For the area machine strategy, we've got a choice of using offset or raster. Now, offset's going to go around the whole of our boundary in this motion, and our rastering strategy will go from side to side all the way from one side to the other. All dependent on what we choose for our rastering angle. So if we choose to just leave it as 0, 0, it would start from the bottom left or right and go from side to side all the way up to the top. If we chose to do it on a different angle, we'd have to specify that in here. We've got a choice of up to 360 degrees. Now, because our lithophane contains quite a few vertical uh, straights and horizontal straights, in our image, it's best not to use one that's going to conflict with that. So best not to use one that's going to go from top to bottom or from side to side. So we're going to use a 45 degree angle here. So if we wanted to start from this corner, we could uh, start and put in 45 degrees here. If we wanted to start from this lower left corner, we'll take 45 degrees off 360. So that would leave us with 315 degrees. So that's the angle that I actually want to start from. So I want to start from the lower left hand corner and work our way up at a 45 degree angle all the way to the top right of our part. So for the rastering angle I'm going to specify 315 in there and then I can just give this a name 3D finish litho and just press the calculate button and that will then calculate our toolpath. And it should now bring us straight back into the preview toolpath form. So let's preview the toolpath. As you can see, it's doing it at the 45 degree angle that we uh, specify we'd like to, from the lower left to the top right. Now one thing, looking at our preview here, in the 2D view and in the 3D view, it's hard to gauge uh, how our 3D lithophane is actually going to turn out when we've actually cut it on the machine. Obviously, we'd like to actually try our best to determine how it's going to turn out before we actually run it on the machine, as lithophanes can be quite lengthy to run. But there is a method in the software which you can use to actually try and determine this. So if we just close the preview toolpass form and then we go back to the drawing tab by pressing this button here. And what we can do is first of all turn off the component that we've got live at the moment as we're going to be creating a new component from the toolpath preview. So what this does is it takes all the heights uh, that's used whilst creating the actual toolpath and then it converts those into a new 3D model so that we can actually get as close as possible to the actual finished product that we could be cutting on the machine. Now the, the beauty of this is that once we've actually done this we can then see a 2D preview of what the image would actually look like and this is what we're going to use to actually determine how well our image would actually turn out. So now we've created our toolpath preview we can go up to model and then create a component from that toolpath preview. So just click that option there you'll notice that we've now got a new component and it's handily called toolpath preview and you'll see that this is the result from running our toolpath and this is the actual image that's been created from the toolpath preview. Now at the moment you may think that it's not actually uh, much use at the moment but what we need to do is actually do the reverse of what we did uh, whilst creating our model for our lithophane. What we did is we reversed all the heights and now at the moment you can see that all the high areas are all the dark parts of the picture and all the uh, low areas uh, of the model is all the light areas in the picture. And what we need to do is just reverse that so that then our 2D preview can then become uh, back to the standard grayscale which we would see if we were viewing our lithophane. Let's right click the toolpath preview and then let's go to the combine mode here and we, this is just a shortcut from the standard way of using the uh, change properties icon here and we can just select to subtract. And as you'll see straight away that we've now got a 2D preview of what our actual image would look like. Now if we just zoom in a bit on our 2D view, you may find that the image that's been cut 
is a little bit blurry especially around the parts where there's quite small detail so around like the teeth and the mouth and around the eyes and you'll also probably notice that it's like this as well around all the fine detail around the waist jacket now this is because we've used quite a large tool to do the finishing toolpath an eighth of an inch ball nose is quite a large tool for a lithophane so what we can do is we can go ahead and then create another lithophane toolpath uh, with a smaller tool and then we can actually then compare the two and see which one we prefer so let's go ahead and let's just turn this toolpath preview back off and let's turn on our original model because we're going to then create another toolpath from the model so let's go back over to the toolpaths and what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this one so just right click the finish and duplicate it that's all we're going to do is we're just going to change the actual finishing tool that we're going to use so let's go into our tool database and what I want to do is I want to use a tool which is half the actual diameter of the one that we've got selected at the moment so I want to use a 16th inch ball nose so I'm going to select the 8th inch and I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to create a new tool in our database for our 16th inch so two things that we always need to make sure that we remember while creating new tools is to always make sure that we've changed the diameter and the name for our tool so I'm just going to specify the values so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take advantage of the built-in maths library so what we can do is simply remove everything that's in this field at the moment and just type in 1 divided by 16 equals on the keyboard and that will then give us the diameter for our 16th inch ball nose so let's just copy this and I'm just going to remove the 0 0.125 here and just change that for the new value and I'm going to accept the current parameters and I'm going to press OK and I'm going to keep everything else the same and I'm just going to click calculate and this will bring us back into the preview toolpath again now because we've already got a preview of our last uh, lithophane which was cut with an eighth inch ball nose we need to reset our preview and then simply just rerun the preview selected toolpath with our new uh, toolpath selected so I'm just going to run that now and you should be able to see already actually that the finer tool has picked up straight away more detail on the uh, waist jacket area and around the teeth as you can see here so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing again close the preview toolpath form we're going to go back to the drawing tab and we're going to create another toolpath preview so again let's uncheck the current model and let's create another toolpath preview by going to model and create component from toolpath preview and let's do the same again let's change the combine mode to subtract and straight away this image looks clearer already I can see more detail around the actual uh, waistcoat and I can just see that there's not that kind of like hazy blur that was present in the last toolpath preview the best way to actually determine this though is to take a closer look so let's go into the 2D view and let's just zoom in a little and straight away we should be able to see that we've got more detailing around the mouth and the teeth area and also around the eyes and also if we just go down a little bit we should be able to see that there's more detail especially on this waistcoat what we can do is we can just turn off this toolpath preview and then turn on the other one and we should be able to see the difference so if I just turn this off and turn this on you should be able to see that there's now not as much detailing around the teeth as you can see that it's kind of made the teeth look a little bit crooked uh, and that's due to the fact that the size of the tool used the eighth inch couldn't actually fit down and actually get all the, the fine detail of the teeth and you'll also notice that the, there is like a haziness around like the eyes here and let's just scroll down and see what the actual jacket's like as well yeah, so you can see that overall because we've used a, a larger tool it has created like a hazy blur around the whole of the image and this is what would actually it would turn out like if we actually run that on the machine there is one downside to this though so if we go back to the toolpaths tab if we look at how long each of these toolpaths is going to take to run by going to here and I'll just select the lithophanes you'll see that the first one that we were going to use the 8th inch ball nose on uh, running at 100 inches a minute it thinks that it's going to take around about an hour and 39 minutes whereas 
the one with the 16th inch ball nose tool it's going to take around 3 hours and 21 minutes so we do have to weigh up obviously the time over the actual overall image quality uh, that we're going to actually get from our lithophane but once we've chosen that we can simply just close that and then we can actually then start saving these tool paths out so if we did want to actually just run the 8th inch with the 3D roughing as one toolpath, we'd go to Save Toolpath with them both selected. Make sure Output All Visible Toolpaths to one file is selected, and make sure that the roughing uh, toolpath comes first in the list, and then the finish last. And then we can just select our post processor, and then press to save the toolpath. Now, if we wanted to obviously do it with the finer detail then we obviously we'd have to say these out as single toolpaths so that we'd do the roughing first with the larger tool and then the 3D finish with the smaller tool as a separate toolpath. Once we're happy with that we can simply just go ahead and click save and then save our file. So I'm just going to call this lithophane underscore toolpath. So if I ever need to come back and alter any of the toolpaths, I know that I've got a file that I can just quickly open and then go back and edit the parameters. And that's it for this tutorial, so thank you for watching.